All right, and we are back with uh, my personal favorite, uh, Arizona State University. Forks up, go Devils. Um, we are going to be here for the next 30 minutes or so talking with Kyla Timmons from ASU uh, about all the options available to students interested in going uh, and looking to be a Sun Devil in their future, which I can attest to is a very good thing to be a part of. Um, so Kyla, thank you for being here uh, and coming out today to inform our students of all the options ASU has to offer. Yeah, no problem. It's a pleasure to be here, guys. <laughs> all right, perfect. Well, uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump straight into the Arizona State presentation. Now remember, before we do, ask your questions on social media, through Facebook, through Twitter, through Instagram. Uh, you can send direct messages or comment on the posts that we have on there so that we can get those questions over to our representatives from each of the schools. And again, you can start asking those questions now, uh, get them posted on the social media sites anytime during the presentation, and we will be able to see them and direct those questions over to Kyla. Mm -hmm. So again, here we go with the presentation for Arizona State University. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Kyla Timmons, like was mentioned previously. Um, I'm a freshman admissions specialist at Arizona State University. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about ASU in general. Um, we're going to go over the admissions requirements, some of our scholarships offered, um, some cool statistics about our university that you probably wouldn't have known before, um, and also maybe some things like housing, um, some of our student organizations, things like that. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and get started here. So ASU is the new American University. Um, and what that means is that we're breaking down some of the traditional walls of higher education um, in order to bring a new way of learning and new ways of engaging our students and faculty. So this was created by our current president. His name is Dr. Michael Crow. about 13 years ago. That's when he became our president. Um, and it's based on three pillars, and that includes access, excellence, and impact. So access to an affordable education, excellence in the faculty that our students learn from and also um, the students that you guys will interact with. And we not only strive to provide impact to our local community here in Phoenix, but also to um, our communities around the world. So one of the biggest things about ASU that I like to point out is that we do value who we include rather than who we exclude, which is why we are such a large university. Now you can see some cool stats here. Um, so we do have currently about 11,000 incoming freshmen. That statistic has changed. It's actually kind of old. Um, and it is growing exponentially each year because we are taking in more and more students. So right now we really value our in-state students, our Arizona residents. Our current ratio is about 63 to 37, so about a 60-40 ratio. Um, we are a very diverse university as well. So we do have about 53 states and territories represented as well as over 130 nations represented as well. So just going around our campuses, if you guys have ever been to the Tempe campus, you will see people from different countries walking around speaking different languages. It's pretty cool. Um, another cool stat I like to point out here is that our student to faculty ratio is fairly small. Um, because we are such a large university, that is fairly surprising. It's about 22 to 1. So what that means is that we have one full-time faculty member for every 22 students on campus. And that allows you guys to have the access you need to your professors. So they will have um, they will have office hours for you guys when necessary to make sure that you guys succeed in your classes. Also, about 5% of your classes, only about 5% of your classes, will have over 100 students. And that is a very small number. Um, that's also kind of surprising since a ASU is so large. Um, so those classes are going to be things like your Biology 101 classes, your Psychology 101, things that you'll take usually as a freshman, maybe a sophomore. So you won't have a lot of those classes when you progress into your degree. As you keep progressing into your degree, whether you're a junior or a senior, you will see that your class sizes will shrink. Um, so for, for example, my senior capstone class, which is the last class you have to take before you get your bachelor's degree, only had about five students in it. And as you can see, about 78% of our classes have 39 or fewer students, so most of our class sizes are fairly small. Also, what makes ASU so unique is that we are one university in many places. Um, so as you can see, we do have a 
fair number of campuses across the state of Arizona. Four of them um, in the Phoenix metro area are for undergraduate students. You can see the West Campus, Downtown Phoenix Campus, Tempe, and Polytechnic. Those are all for undergraduate students. The Thunderbird Campus is for graduate students. Um, it's primarily for business, global business students. And recently we just opened a campus at Lake Havasu City that's brand new. Um, so all of these campuses that we have are self-sustaining. And what that means is that you can finish your entire degree at that one campus. You don't have to move around. So you can do everything from your freshman classes all the way up to your senior capstone at one particular campus. We actually do encourage you guys to move around, however, um, because we do have such a good bus system that will take you all across the valley. So I'm sure you guys have probably seen them before. If you do live in the valley, they're big charter buses. Um, they usually say learn to thrive on them. And they have Wi-Fi, they're double-decker, and they have air conditioning. So if you're a student, they will take you to each campus for free. And um, you can take as many classes as you want at any campus that you want. So we do encourage you guys to move around. So now I'm going to go into each campus here a little bit. Um, our downtown Phoenix campus, that's located right in the heart of downtown Phoenix. It's personally my favorite. Um, it's one of our more professional campuses, I would say. It's for most of our public service majors. So as you can see on the right bottom of the screen there, those are going to be all the colleges that are offered at that particular campus. Um, so one of our big ones is the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. We have our nursing majors housed there. Um, if you're interested in anything like social work, or criminal justice, criminology, um, psychology, those are also going to be at the downtown Phoenix campus. We also have our nutrition program down there as well. Now we have our Polytechnic campus. Um, that's located out in East Mesa. It's one of our smaller campuses out of the four um, in the Phoenix area for you guys. We only have about 500 to 1,000 incoming freshmen each year. So if you guys are looking for that kind of small feeling, um, it's a very quiet campus as well, and you still want to attend ASU, definitely look into that Polytechnic campus. We highly recommend that you guys take tours of all of our campuses if you are interested in ASU. Um, most of our engineering programs are going to be offered at the Polytechnic campus. Some of them are also offered at Tempe, but I'll go ahead and get into that a little later, um, as well as some of our business programs as well. So. And then, of course, we have our Tempe campus, where most of you, if you're from the Valley, have probably visited before. Um, it is our biggest campus, population-wise and size-wise. It is also our oldest campus, and we offer the most majors also at um, the Tempe campus. So we have about, um, I would say, 8,000 or more incoming freshmen each year, but like I said, that number is growing specifically at the Tempe campus. Also, we have our West Campus that's located out in Glendale. Um, it's about a 45-minute drive from the Tempe campus with traffic, sometimes. <laughs> um, so some of our business programs are offered at the, at the West Campus, as well as our new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences. So that program is for um, if you are interested in a specific career and you want to blend two specific majors together to get that career, to um, apply those to your upcoming career. So that's kind of what the Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences College is about. Um, we also offer our teachers college out there and some of our nursing programs are at the West Campus. So the West Campus is probably going to be one of the smallest campuses we have. We have less than 400, or, sorry, 500 freshmen coming in there each year. It hasn't really been growing. Um, it's a very pretty campus. It's also very quiet. It's modeled after Oxford University, so everything is facing inward. There's lots of flowing water, lots of brick buildings. Um, it's still ASU, <laughs> so if you are interested in also that small kind of feel, definitely check out the West Campus as well if you can. And lastly here, I'm just going to go over our ASU colleges at Lake Havasu City. Um, that one is a brand new campus. It just opened a couple of years ago. It's right on the lake, as you can see in the picture. And right to the right, you can see all the different majors that are offered at that particular um, campus. So we only have about 200 students total at this campus right now. So if you kind of want to get away from the valley, but you still want to attend ASU, definitely check out colleges at Lake Havasu City. We do offer tours there. All right, guys, so now I'm going to go ahead and go over the degrees that we offer. Um, we do offer over 300 majors to choose from, which is a lot. So we are guaranteed to offer something that you are interested in. Um, 
I don't really have anything that I can, you know, I don't have like a reference sheet that I can give you guys right now. But what I would recommend here is going to this website that's pictured on the computer screen. Um, it's asu.edu slash degrees. And it will ask you to do a search of what you're interested in specifically. So if you're interested in nursing or if you're interested in criminal justice or if you're interested in math or computer science, definitely type that into the box when you get to this page. And it will come up with all the different majors that we offer that pertain to your keyword search. And once you search that, if you click on that major, it will show you all the information you need to know about that specific degree. So it will show you the program overview. It will show you the different campuses it's located at because sometimes um, there are majors that are offered at only one specific campus um, or there will be majors offered at many campuses where you get to pick which one you go to. And I'll kind of go over that in just a moment. Um, it will also show you your major map. And the major map is really important because if you're taking dual enrollment courses, um, for instance, okay, so basically it'll show you all the different classes you're going to be taking as an undergraduate student at ASU, and it's broken down by semester. So if you're taking dual enrollment courses, maybe through um, a college or a community college, something like that, you can see how those classes will transfer and what kind of credit you'll get for those classes um, so you don't have to take those classes while you're at ASU, basically. Perfect. So guys, again, make sure, check out the website, asu.edu backslash degrees. Uh, again, it is very helpful. Freshmen to graduating seniors, wherever you fall in the, uh, in, the, in the spectrum there, make sure you're doing as much research as possible beforehand. And this is definitely a good way to do that, to be able to see all the degrees laid out for you so you know what you could potentially be interested in. You might see something that you didn't even think was a degree option that turns out, hey, I can get my degree in that and I'm very interested in it. So it's definitely very helpful to go ahead and check the website out as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree. Um, now, of course, here's the nitty-gritty kind of stuff. We have our admissions requirements. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go over those first and then how to apply. So we're looking for basically the 16 core classes that all of our in-state universities are also going to be looking for. So that includes the four years of English, four years of math, three years of a lab science, two years of the same foreign language, two years of a social science, one of those has to be American history, and then a year of fine arts, fine arts or career and technical education. So if you have all those classes and you have at least a 2.0 in each subject area, and you also meet one of the following criteria on the bottom, it's just one, it's not all four, you have to either be in the top 25% of your high school graduating class, you have to have a 3.0 core GPA, and a core GPA means a 3.0 in those 16 core classes I just listed out, um, a 22 on your ACT or an 1120 on your SAT. Um, so if you meet one of those and have all the 16 core classes, you will be admissible to ASU. So the steps to apply, basically it's all done online. Um, we don't do paper anymore, unfortunately. So that's easier for you guys. Um, we do have an application fee for our in-state residents of $50. Um, we just also moved to something called the self-reporting option. So what that means is that you don't have to send us transcripts anymore from your high school, which saves about two to three weeks from getting your admissions decision. So usually it takes about two weeks now to get an admissions decision if you self-report your grades. And what that means is you're going to go ahead and put in all the different classes you've taken in high school and the grades for them, um, also your in-progress classes. So we can go ahead and evaluate your application that way. We won't need a transcript from you. Also, we do recommend that you turn in your ACT, SAT scores if you have taken them. Um, so we can go ahead and evaluate you if you don't meet that 3.0 core GPA requirement. Um, you still have a chance of getting in with your ACT and SAT scores. And of course, ACT, SAT scores are always valuable for scholarships as well. So make sure that you do turn those into us when you apply. All right, this is going to be our tuition and cost of attendance for our Arizona residents. So as of right now, this year, um, you're looking at the tuition rate for 2016-2017. Our room and board and books and supplies might vary depending on if you want to live on campus or if you want to live at home or if you want to live off campus. So the cost you're looking at right now for room and board is for living on campus. Books and supplies also vary depending on where you get them. So if you get them from the bookstore, if you get them online, um, that's going to vary in price as well. Also, we're not including the indirect costs. So these are just going to be your direct costs. The indirect costs include things like your transportation, so moving around from campus to campus, or if you're going home for a holiday break. Um, also, personal items like shopping, going grocery shopping, your laundry, um, parking passes, things like that. 
And now you're probably wondering, well, how am I going to pay for that? <laughs> um, so we do have many different scholarships offered for our Arizona incoming freshmen. I would recommend um, going to this website here that's listed on the screen. It's our scholarship estimator. It's going to ask you to plug in your core GPA, your SAT score, your ACT score, and your class rank. If you don't know your class rank, that's totally fine. It is optional on the page. Um, but basically, by plugging this in, you're going to see exactly what you qualify for at ASU, what kind of merit scholarship you qualify for. And it is accurate, so it will let you know um, specific details about that, how much you'll get, how much money you'll save, things like that. These are our tuition-free programs. So they're not quite scholarships because they're based on your need, not necessarily on your merit. So I'm going to go ahead and go over the President Barack Obama Scholars Program. Um, you do have to be a first-time freshman, Arizona resident, full-time degree-seeking student, which all of you will be coming into ASU. The thing is, your family has to make a collective $42,400 or less per year in income. Um, so that's measured by your FAFSA, and I'm really hoping that all of you know what the FAFSA is by now um, because it has opened on October 1st. Definitely get that in as soon as possible because there are benefits that come along with that, with getting it in early. Um, so if your family, if we see that your family makes a collective $42,400 or less each year and you meet all course competencies in one aptitude, meaning you are admissible to ASU and your FAFSA is submitted by January 1st, that is the priority deadline for financial aid for submitting that FAFSA, we will cover your direct costs. So like I was telling you guys earlier, that's your tuition and fees, your room and board, and your books and supplies. So, it's a pretty good deal. Um, if you guys think you qualify, I definitely recommend applying and getting your FAFSA submitted to us as soon as possible. Also, the college attainment grant, that's a little bit different. Um, I apologize, there's some false information on here. So, you do have to be an Arizona resident, first-time freshman, full-time degree-seeking student, just like the Barack Obama Scholars Program. The thing is, you just have to be Pell Grant eligible. So you don't have to have a collective income of $42,400 or less. You just have to be Pell Grant eligible. Um, and that's also determined by the FAFSA. So that's why it's very important to get your FAFSA into us by January 1st. So if you qualify for the college attainment grant, we will cover just your tuition and fees, which is still a huge portion of your college expenses. All right, student housing. So if you guys do decide to live on campus, which you do not have to, I think that's kind of a um, misconception about ASU is that you have to live on campus. We do not require our freshmen to live on campus anymore. So just to let you know though, about 90% of our incoming freshmen do decide to live on campus. So if you do decide to live there, um, we do have residential colleges. And what that means is that each floor you'll be living on has the, everybody that's living on that floor with you will have the same major as you. So if you decide to be a psychology major, um, everybody on your floor will also be psychology majors or will be a part of the same college as you. So they will be taking the same classes as you, they'll have the same homework, the same teachers. If you guys need any help with anything, it's a great way for you guys to seek help. Your neighbors are all around you, they're all in the same classes. We have built-in tutors, um, basically they live at the end of each hall of each residential college. So all you have to do is walk out the door, knock on their door, and you'll have some help. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. And if you guys are interested in the honors experience at ASU, um, if any of you are taking honors courses, AP, IB, anything like that, I highly recommend checking out Barrett. It's our honors college. Um, it's a pretty big deal. It won the gold standard from the New York Times pretty recently. So other honors, honors colleges from across the United States are coming to ASU to look at Barrett to see how they can improve their honors colleges because we are so good. So they're not looking for specific minimum SAT, ACT scores or a core GPA. That's kind of the cool thing about Barrett. Um, they really value diversity, whether it be academic, um, cultural, ethnicity, things like that. So they want people from all different backgrounds. So the thing that they're going to be looking for the most, though, if you do decide to apply to Barrett, is your two letters of recommendation. One of them does have to be academic. The other can be personal or academic. It's up to you. Um, and they're also going to be looking at your personal statement essay. So that prompt is now online. It's been online for about a month now. Um, if you guys want to check it out, it's through our Barrett website. And it does have to be about 500 words. It's not too long at all. Um, and they are going to be evaluating you guys mostly on that essay and your two letters of recommendation. 
So the cool thing about Barrett is that you will write a full thesis before you even graduate with your bachelor's degree. And that's pretty impressive because that's mostly what master's students do, or people getting their master's degree, so graduate students. They're the ones writing their theses. Um, so if you guys are interested in going to graduate school after you get your bachelor's degree at ASU, or if you're looking to uh, move into a competitive job market, Barrett looks really great on a resume. And if you guys are interested in studying abroad, which I know is my biggest regret um, as an undergraduate student is not studying abroad, <laughs> um, I highly recommend it. So we have over 200 dif 250 different programs in more than 55 countries, and that's a lot. So um, it depends on what you want to study. That's the different programs depend on what you want to study, but they will send you to somewhere that pertains to what you want to study specifically. Um, I think the biggest misconception about studying abroad is that it's too expensive or that you're not going to finish your degree in time. Both of those are not true. Um, so we do offer different scholarships and grants that you can apply for specifically for studying abroad. That means they'll pay for your plane ticket, your food, your housing while you're there. Um, and if you have any scholarships or financial aid offered through ASU, um, you can use that to study abroad in a different country. So basically you're going to be using that money at another university in a different country. Um, and then, of course, you're going to be taking classes there, so they will transfer back over to ASU, which means that you'll finish your degree <laughs> on time. I actually know people who have actually graduated early while studying abroad, so. Can't beat that. Get done with school, and you get to go yeah. to <laughs> Europe or somewhere else. And really, this is the only time in your guys' lives that you can actually pick up your life for, you know, a whole semester and then go to a different country and then come back, so <laughs> highly recommend it. There you go. Definitely check that out. <laughs> Study abroad programs at ASU. Um, and just a couple more things here, guys. So we do have over 1,100 different clubs and organizations at ASU across all four of our campuses in the Phoenix area. Um, and those range, obviously. So we have kind of silly things, like we have a Quidditch league. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen Quidditch being played in real life before, but it's awesome. Um, we have an entrepreneurs club, of course. We have outdoors kind of clubs as well. We have um, any kind of religious or political organizations you can think of. We have a taco eating club. If you guys really like eating tacos on Taco Tuesday, they gather together. Who doesn't love tacos? <laughs> yep. So we have basically everything that you can possibly think of. If we don't have something that you guys are interested in, it's very easy to start a club. It only takes about two or three students and a full-time staff member, and bam, you have a new organization. So. All right. And lastly here, I'm just going to finish up with our first year success coaching. Um, so that is a program for our incoming freshmen, specifically for you guys. It hooks you up with a specific junior or senior who has taken the classes that you guys were, are currently taking. So they know what you're going through. They're usually of the same major as you or in the same college as you. So they know what's going on. They know it's kind of hard to transition from high school to college. So that's what they're there for. They're kind of like a mentor. So if you're having issues with your classes, if you're having a hard time with your homework, you're having a hard time passing something, they're going to be there for you. Even if you're having a hard time making friends, any kind of social situations, they're going to be the ones to talk to. Um, so VIP2 coaching is essentially the same thing. It's just called something different. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, and before we go ahead and jump into the question and answer section, um, contact information for Kyla. So if anybody has any questions, there's something that you guys would like to ask that you didn't hear, you might have missed, or we just didn't get a chance to get to, uh, the way you're going to contact Kyla is ASU, ASU, Kyla Timmons, K-Y-L-A-T-I-M-M-O-N-S, at asu.edu. Again, it's going to be ASU Kyla Timmons at asu.edu. Or you can reach out to her by phone 480-727-4222. And again, the number is 480-727-4222 and that'll get you in touch with Kyla so you can ask any questions that might not have been answered. So we're going to go over to our student Q&A right now. We've got some great questions uh, students have been asking. So let's go ahead and we will jump right into those questions. Uh, the first one uh, from Cynthia on Instagram. Cynthia, thank you again for submitting that question. Uh, so if I'm a creative writing uh, major and I'm in the creative writing program, uh, would my bachelor's degree be in English or would it be specifically in creative writing? I believe it would be in English, um, but we do have specific emphases for the English program. So you get okay. to pick specifically what you want to study in the English program. And I do think we have a writing 
um, emphasis that you can pick from. So definitely look at that degrees website. If you type in English, it will come up with all the different English programs we offer, um, and each emphasis is gonna be listed next to it. So look for specifically the writing one, look at the overview, look at your major map, look to see if you're interested in that. Um, if you are, and you've never taken a tour of the campus that it's located, I, I believe it's at the Tempe campus, you can always come take a tour, and you can take a tour of the, the actual college that you'll be at, and you can ask any questions you need to, um, see what it's like to be a student that sort of thing. Okay, perfect. So, Cynthia, just make sure, uh, definitely check out the website, all the degrees that were listed. They'll be able to tell you on there. Again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Kyla directly after the uh, uh, Digital College Fair has ended. Mm -hmm. um, next question, uh, you mentioned, you know, there's obviously multiple campuses, West, Polytech, uh, Maine, downtown. Would students have to bounce between campuses throughout the day? Is that something that's pretty pretty standard for students going from Tempe to downtown or downtown mm -hmm. to West? It does happen. It depends on your major and for instance, I know people that have doubled majored and their specific major is offered at the Tempe campus, but their other major is located downtown. So they will have to bounce back and forth, but it is doable. Okay. You just have to make sure to schedule your classes so you can get there on time. Um, and usually, like I said, that all the campuses are self-sustaining, so usually people stay at one campus, but we do encourage you guys to move around and take classes at different campuses. You don't have to, of course, um, but we do encourage you to. So for instance, if you're stationed at the Tempe campus and you wanna take a class downtown, you're more than welcome to, but usually people will stay at one campus. Okay, perfect. Um, now, as far as scholarships go, are there, uh, Specific scholarships, do you guys have scholarships for online students coming from online programs? Um, do you have specific scholarships just for online students? Uh, how does yeah. that whole system so work? So our primary scholarships are gonna be those merit-based scholarships I was talking about. They're awarded automatically to our students um, when they submit their application, right? And we have your SAT, ACT scores. But if you're interested in more specific scholarships, like for instance, primarily for online students coming into ASU, um, I would definitely recommend looking online for those. We do have a scholarship portal for all of you guys too. When you are admitted students, you'll have access to that. And it will come up with all these different ASU specific scholarships, whether it be departmental, through different organizations through ASU. There's even some non-ASU ones on there, so it's really easy to find them. Um, if you just do a simple search in that scholarship portal, like if you type in online, It'll come up with all the different scholarships that are offered um, that you can apply for. Usually you have to write like an essay or some kind of um, whatever their requirements are. But that's kind of how you would apply for those specific ones. But the ones that are automatically granted to you guys are those merit-based scholarships. So anything else you will have to apply for. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, now as far as on-campus housing goes, um, is on-campus housing available at each of the campuses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. each campus has their own residential hall. Um, obviously Tempe has the most because we're the biggest, but each campus has, I believe downtown has one, it's called Taylor Place, it's really nice. <laughs> um, and then the other ones, Polly and um, West, do have ones as well. Usually it's only about one, depending on how big the campus is. So we also have Barrett located at every single campus as well. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and the last question uh, that it looks like we got, uh, is the light rail a viable option if you're in Tempe and you're trying to get to other campuses? Is that something that students could take? Um, and is there a um, waiver for students to ride the light rail back and forth uh, at a reduced cost, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there is a discount for you guys to ride the light rail. Okay. Um, it does, I think it starts in Mesa and goes to downtown. So it would end in downtown Phoenix, but I know a lot of our students that do take courses down at the downtown Phoenix campus take the light rail. Okay. So you don't have to take the bus, you can take the light rail if it's more convenient for you, um, but I do believe you get a discounted rate for the light rail as opposed to the buses, which are free. Okay, yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. So students, if you uh, have the need to go downtown or you're bouncing between Tempe and Maine, looks like you have multiple options between the bus system that ASU operates as well as the light rail available to you. Um, and you know, being a former Sun Devil, the most notable stat that I took out of that presentation, uh, and I actually wrote it down for you guys, 85% of full-time faculty have the highest degree offered in their field. So you guys are being taught by a lot of the best people available to teach these courses. Mm -hmm. um, so Some yeah. of them are Pulitzer Prize winners. We have about four Pulitzer Prize winners teaching at ASU right now. So 
chances are you could be taught by a Pulitzer Prize winner. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, we are on our way. Uh, we're about a third of the way through the presentations today. Uh, we've got U of A coming up next, followed by uh, East Valley Institute of Technology. Um, so those will be the next two presentations we have. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. So again, Kyla, thank you very much for attending. Mm -hmm. uh, go Devils. And we will see you guys all back here. Keep those questions coming. We'll see you all back here in about 10 minutes. Bye, guys. Thank you.